Many women are turning away from feminism, not because they don't support women's success and empowerment, but rather because the movement has become extremely polarized and politicized to the point where no one knows what feminism or women's empowerment really means anymore. There are so many ideological divides and the movement is just not consistent. Barrier. Women doesn't, don't have barriers? I'm, women, yeah. What, what's we stopping have no you? you can do whatever you want. This growing disconnect of the feminist movement has resulted in many people distancing themselves from the feminist label. I don't hate men. I'm not a feminist. According to a 2014 research article that was published by the Frontiers in Psychology, three quarters of women are concerned about women's rights, while less than one third consider themselves feminists. Part of the explanation for this paradox might result from the fact that there are many different conceptions of what feminism is or ought to be, and that it lacks a commonly established definition. And since this research has been published 10 years ago, it doesn't seem much has changed. My name is Hannah Jennerine. I'm a speaker and educator on violence prevention and personal development. And in this video, we are going to be dissecting the feminist paradox, why women are regretting feminism, and what women's empowerment really means. Also, these are my personal views. They do not reflect the opinions and interests of any of my contracts or employer. And if you are watching this as an education or training coordinator, and if you would like to schedule a presentation for your school or organization, my email is in the description down below for inquiries. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on for more content. Okay, so first things first. In order for us to really understand why women are regretting feminism, there are a few concepts and terminologies that we need to understand. The first is the feminist paradox and the messaging behind modern day feminism. You see, in theory, feminism aims to uplift women, challenge stereotypes, and promote gender equality. From what I remember growing up, feminism was all about giving women a voice, encouraging them to pursue their dreams, and advocating for their right to have opportunities and career growth. This is why I started a Building Beauty From Within club in high school, because I recognized the importance of building your self-image and developing your self-esteem. However, as I observe the current state of affairs and what's really happening in our society today, these ideals haven't exactly translated as smoothly as feminists have hoped for. Instead of feeling liberated, excited, and grateful to pursue different opportunities and find their purpose, some women end up exhibiting self-centered attitudes, constantly seeing themselves as victims and blaming men for their problems. This is what the feminist paradox is, and it highlights the gap between feminist ideals and the lived experiences of women. If you don't believe me, all you have to do is type in women regretting feminism on YouTube and watch any of the number of videos that come up. And let me tell you, there are a lot, especially on TikTok. And my take on the feminist paradox is that if the ideal of feminism is to truly build women up, then why are women focusing on their perceived limitations and feeling as if they are constantly being held back from success? If the ideal of feminism is encouraging women to become assertive and aspire them to grow, then why are women believing that complete self-sufficiency is what they should strive for and that relying on anyone, especially a man, is seen as a form of weakness? Well, based on current trends, this has a lot to do with the feminist movement, specifically the messaging behind feminism and the toxic femininity that has emerged. While feminism has rightly called out toxic masculinity and the harmful stereotypes associated with it, it's been less vocal about addressing its own shortcomings. From what I see, toxic femininity is about self-absorption, feeling this need to do it all yourself and having little consideration for others. It's not about you, it's about me. It promotes the idea that women can be completely successful on her own, when the truth is that success has so many moving parts. We all need one another to succeed. There are people who believe in you, people who give you opportunities, people who support you and stand by you. Sometimes there are people who betray you and that betrayal fuels your passion and drive. 
And the rhetoric that modern day feminism has adopted, where women can and should do it by themselves, has contributed to hyper independence. No, thank you, I can do it myself. I actually created a video on this a few weeks ago. So if you are interested and want more in-depth information, definitely go check it out. But the basic premise is that since feminism tends to praise women who can do it all, this has put immense pressure on women to constantly prove themselves and can lead to feelings of isolation, burnout, and a reluctance to ask for help when needed. And what hyper-independence does is reinforce this idea that women should be able to handle everything alone, which can not only take a toll on their mental and emotional well-being, I'm so tired but also encourages a narrow focus on individual achievement and status to the point where women feel compelled to prioritize their own needs and ambitions above those of others. This self-centered approach can also impact their interpersonal relationships and lead to a sense of entitlement and selfishness, which further reinforces patterns of self-absorption. Toxic femininity also consists of women believing that they are the victims in every situation. Hey. I'm the victim here, you said it yourself. Constantly saying that they are the ones who are wronged, never taking accountability, and believing that the patriarchy is committed to keeping women oppressed in society. You sound as if you've been brainwashed by the patriarchy. This is where the I don't need a man attitude comes from. And many women are adopting this hateful and dismissive belief towards men, which has even contributed to misandry in our culture today. Misandry is essentially hateful speech that is directed towards men. Common sayings include, men are oppressors, they are the root of all societal problems, they are violent, they are, you know, the ones who create all this conflict and so forth. And it's become very much caught up in the demonization of male. I was reading some articles on misandry the other day and I came across an article from The Medium. And I was really taken aback at what was written and how people are justifying prejudice against men. So let's just read this quote together. When women push back against male privilege, create women's spaces and raise their fists to smash the patriarchy, it is not sexism, it is a response to sexism. In short, misogyny is oppression and misandry, it's a justifiable response. I have a lot of thoughts about this. And if you've made it this far, please let me know what you're thinking right now, what your initial reaction to this is. And if you want to read the article, I will link it down in the description down below because I just, I would love to know. But moving on, toxic femininity is also hyper obsessed with sexuality and hookup culture, thinking, well, if men can sleep around and have a high body count, so should I. This mentality is very counterintuitive to women's empowerment because what it does is objectify and reduce women to just their sexuality, which is the very thing that feminism is supposedly fighting for, right? Or against. I mean, I mean that's what I thought, right? And this just ties back to the claim the feminist movement has become extremely polarized and politicized because hookup culture is a great example of an issue that divides many feminists. So the question now is, what should feminists be fighting for? what really encompasses women's empowerment. Instead of objectifying and reducing women to just our sexuality, shouldn't we be encouraged to grow as individuals and build our character and self-esteem so that we can live in accordance with our values and develop a skill set that makes us valuable in the workplace? I mean, that's, that's what I think, right? This is all to say that many women are starting to regret feminism. I think there's a whole generation of older feminists like me who no longer call themselves feminists. The ideals that they were taught would empower them and make them successful and strong are hindering their growth. So the question now is, how can we course correct moving forward? Well, the first step would be having a concrete definition of what empowerment is and what it is not. Women's empowerment is not about objectifying yourself. It's not feeling victimized by your own womanhood. It's not hating your femininity. It's not pushing yourself to be hyper-independent to the point where you feel like you don't need anyone. Women's empowerment is also definitely not about blaming men for everything that goes wrong in your life. It's about holding yourself accountable, tapping into your femininity, developing your character, leaning into your confidence, honoring your values and morals, and having high standards for yourself. I believe that women have the power to shape their own destinies through the decisions that they make. And toxic femininity self-sabotages women by creating a narrative where they feel as if their life has already been predetermined and that they are inherently so many external factors that are holding them back. 
This underscores the resilience and strength of women and feeds into internalized misogyny. So what are your thoughts? How do you feel about former feminists coming forward and sharing their stories? And how do you think we can course correct? Don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have a different perspective, then please also share that as well. I would love to hear what you think. And I can't wait to read what you say. If you like this content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on for more content. And I will see you with a new video very soon.